Good evening. The Summit of the Americas is a summit under siege. Day two began where day one left off with police and protesters fighting a series of running battles. For the first time, security forces opened up with water cannon. Tonight, demonstrators regrouped and launched a fresh assault. I don't see any cops getting beat up. I don't see anything other than them fighting us to stay away from this gate. The focal point for tonight's clashes and the ones earlier on, the fence around the perimeter. It has become the flashpoint in the battle at the barricades. And that is where CTV's Jed Gahane spent much of the day. Jed, the protesters you saw today, are they any better organized than those who demonstrated in Seattle? Well, I wasn't in Seattle, but they are very well organized. They have gas mask shields. They wear padding. Uh, and they're very well armed as well. Police and a militant group of protesters clashed several times throughout the day. At one point, police were forced to use a water cannon, tear gas, and rubber bullets to keep the unruly crowd in check. Man. One of these, holy shit. If they don't want us to take part in the system, then, uh, then obviously we won't. We'll just have to create our own system. I pose uh, capitalism in itself as being individualistic and counter to the beauty of what I think uh, our inherent purpose is to be on the earth, which is to share and live co more cooperatively and to promote culture, promote, uh, promote sort of creation and, you know, building a better earth. Friday night, a group of a thousand young people who were dancing under a bridge, dancing under a bridge, far from the fence, were gassed without provocation. We will use whatever measure uh, we deem appropriate uh, to, to make sure that perimeter is kept secure. <laughs> A small number of individuals uh, seem determined uh, repeatedly uh, to uh, uh, cause violence. The same people who are sitting up on the hill right now having lunch are plotting the demise of the planet by continuing to pump fossil fuels into the United States and send them up to destroy the atmosphere. We need to talk about real issues. We gotta take the power back! Do you acknowledge that you and the other heads of state here have a problem in regards credibility and maybe even legit legitimacy in your respective countries? Question of our legitimacy? We are very legitimate. We are elected, all of us. <laughs> He's not there at the will of the people. He stole that election in Florida. He stole it outright. They know they stole that election. They're sitting there in the White House going, how did we get away with this? This is incredible. This is, nobody did anything. What else can we do? Um, well, you have to ask yourself who has the capability and who has the motive to do kind of this kind of operation. Obviously a very sophisticated um, operation. There's just an extremely limited number of people who could pull this off. That's why it's significant when George Bush said the United States wants more energy. The leader needed the permanent war. The leader needed to have the people believe that the enemy was everywhere, anywhere, and could strike at any moment. The leader needed the people to be in a constant state of fear and panic that their life could end, and only then was the leader able to get the people to willingly, gladly, give up their freedom and their liberty and their rights just so they could live and survive? That's what's going on here. This is not a war on terrorism. 
This is a war on us. These people are out to shred the Constitution, to take away your civil liberties, to do a lot of things under the guise of 9-11. 15 of the 19 hijackers from Saudi Arabia, but we bombed Afghanistan. <laughs> Did we miss? The price of energy is, is high enough to spur uh, exploration activities. <laughs> What the United States can do is to provide uh, markets by better pipelines, uh, welcoming supplies of natural gas regardless of the country of origin. Do you know the Taliban made repeated visits to Texas while George W. Bush was governor to meet with his oil company buddies? Why were they there? To discuss the building of a pipeline for UNICAL to bring natural gas from the Caspian Sea through Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, and out to the sea. Who was going to help build the pipeline? Halliburton. Who was the head of Halliburton then? Dick Cheney. Who did the feasibility study for one of the pipelines? Enron. It's a wonderful system of government you and I have.